Hey YouTubers, YouTubeettes. Well, as you can see, it's fall time, and we're all experiencing the changing of the leaves. And today I thought I would take some time to go over root tabs and fertilizers in the substrate. Got to feed those roots to make those plants grow well. So here we are looking at my 55 show tank. As you can see, everybody seems to be happy and swimming along on their merry little ways. Um, you will also notice that it's getting a bit overgrown again. Um, I will reiterate uh, something that I said in some of my past videos. For those of you with planted tanks, or just starting up planted tanks, I should say, um, once you do get to the point where everything starts to take off and you get your fertilizer dosage down and everything's growing uh, you're gonna find out that one of the downsides to having the plants grow lush and beautiful is that you gotta keep up with the trimming on them now uh, believe it or not this is about six days worth um, the plants that you see uh, uh, like the uh, Ludwigia, the red ripen, repens you see uh, towards the uh, right side of the screen that is all the way up to the surface of the water now was cut down to half that size six days ago. And that's how fast it grows. Uh, the Rotella Indica, which is right to the right of it, uh, in, right behind the uh, compact Hygro, uh, this kind of spiny looking or whatever, uh, it was cut down to the same height as that compact high grow and the blixa that you see and it has grown that much in six days the uh, hygrophilia which is all the way to the right in the back corner there that is the uh, spindly looking plant um, was also cut down to that height so all these plants double in size within a week um, some of the other plants, like the Blixa, doesn't grow quite as fast. The Compact High Grow, uh, that's about as tall as I think it gets. The uh, Tiger Lotus, the Red Tiger Lotus, that you see uh, towards the middle of the screen in the front, um, has a pretty good growth rate on it. Um, I've gotten to now to where I've trained it down to grow lower to the substrate, uh, which is uh, something you do through the process of every time it gets up about halfway to three quarters of the way in growth towards the surf surface of the water you uh, trim it back and just leave the lower leaves always make sure you leave lower leaves though um, the crypt parva which is in the left side front there um, I've had that pretty much from the start of the tank um, and uh, it's never gotten any taller than that and it's a slow grower um, seems real happy where it's at um, it doesn't require as much light so as I said we're talking about uh, substrate fertilizers now as you all know or if you don't know this is a dirted tank which means it has a uh, soil base at the very bottom which has a lot of nutrients in it that uh, feed the plants uh, well even with a dirted tank for the most part you can get away with uh, uh, just doing dosing the uh, liquid fertilizers for the first year or so but uh, after a period of time uh, depending on how much dirt you add and how, what quality it is uh, it could be anywhere from after the first year to even out to five years. You will eventually get to a point where you need to uh, add some substrate fertilizers. For those of you who don't have dirty tanks and are just doing it in gravel or sand, you already know about uh, using the uh, substrate fertilizers. So say you either have a sand or gravel tank or a older dirted tank where things aren't growing quite as well as they were the first so many years that you had it dirted and it's time for you to step up and do some substrate fertilizers uh let's let's talk about that 
So now here we are looking at the 40 breeder, which is the newest of my show tanks. Um, as you can see, it's not near as lush and full grown or overgrown as the 55 is, yet it is coming along quite well. Freshly dirted just a few months ago. Um, doesn't require the uh, tablets or extra root fertilization at this point. It is settling in now, and as you can see in the right-hand side foreground, the AR Mini is uh, doing quite well. Uh, it is growing faster and faster from day to day, uh, filling in that whole area. Uh, to the right of it in the foreground is some uh, SP Rippins, which uh, I bought as a tissue culture from... PetSmart and didn't think it was going to make it, but uh, it is actually starting to put off shoots now and new plantlets are coming up through the substrate. Um, I will be going out and getting some more of it to add to, uh, you know, to fill in that area to add to it. Um, to the right of it in the foreground, you see about four or five small down noise. Um, these were contributed to me by one of my fellow YouTubers. Uh, his uh, screen name is Ruben. Um, I uh, recommend you go check out his tanks. He's got some very beautiful plants going on there. And he's just in the process of setting up a new 40 breeder. So we'll see how that works out for Ruben. But uh, they are now uh, settled in and they're starting to put off shoots and uh, also coming up with small plantlets off to the side. So everything is getting pretty well settled into the tank. Uh, everything's stabilizing. And uh, even though I don't yet need to uh, concern myself with adding uh, root tabs to this tank, um, it is... Uh, it does have some deficiencies. I, I, of course, I am dosing the uh, liquid fertilizers, but uh, when I put the dirt in, uh, there's different layers of the substrate above the dirt, so some of the plants have to kind of put their roots down a lot further to get to the nutrients uh, in the dirt, and which requires, when doing my trimmings, and replanting, uh, I have to know that on the higher points where there is just the substrate and it's further down to the dirt, I have to plant those, you know, put the shoots in a lot lower down towards the dirt so that those roots can readily access it and get the nutrients out of it. Um, on that note, I would like to uh, make a point uh, that had been brought up to me by one of my fellow YouTubers. Uh, about uh, using sand and finer grained uh, uh, substrates on top of dirt. Um, the uh, comment was that uh, it can trap the gases um, of the decaying organics in the dirt below the surface of, and uh, you can have an outgassing where you get a quick big couple of bubbles that come up through the, the tank and uh, uh, that's uh, hydrogen sulfide gas, which is pretty, pretty devastating to the fish. And um, if you take the time to mineralize your soil, which means taking and drying it out in the sun and then wetting it down and drying it out and wetting it down and drying it out to where you basically kill off all the uh, bacteria in the soil itself uh, through this process and then use it in the tank you will not have the problem with the off-gassing. If you are in a hurry and you lay the dirt down as it comes out of the bag, wood chips and all, uh, you will run into some of this problem. Um, if you're going to use a sand as a substrate on top of it, I would recommend that you use a fine layer of sand uh, and try to get a larger grain sand because if you use something like play sand and you put uh, two inches of it on top, you will run into this problem. Um, in this case, I have uh, about an inch and a half of regular, uh, regular uh, eco-complete and then the sand uh, layer, which is a very fine layer 
uh, maybe a half inch or so of sand on top, and I haven't had the problem. So enough said about that. And here we are with the 20 long, which was the second show tank that I set up with dirt. Uh, this one of all three, I think, got the most amount of dirt on its base. And uh, it has a, uh, I would say, medium-sized gravel, small to medium-sized gravel uh, on top of it, along with some uh, pool filter sand, kind of an intermix of. Um, the sand I used uh, as a a finer grain uh, substance so that I could plant some of the smaller, shallower rooted plants, uh, which sand is great at that for uh, if you're going to mess around with uh, Blixa and uh, uh, SP Rippins and uh, Baby Tears and uh, some of the smaller, shallower rooted Downoy and all that. Uh, it uh, is much easier to work with in the finer grained. Uh, to keep it down and stuff. Uh, with the gravel, since they, it has such shallow roots, a lot of the times if you've got uh, quarry cats or any of the fish that like to root around, uh, even Placostomus or whatever like that, they'll tend to uproot it and you'll end up with a bunch of plants floating on the surface of your tank. So sand helps helps with that aspect. Um, you know, But with all good, there's the bad side too. And you don't want to use too much sand, otherwise then you run into the problems with the gases once again. Um, this tank seemed to uh, work out real well. Uh, as you can see, it's extremely lush and extremely in bad need of a uh, trimming, um, which I'm going to be getting around to uh, probably this next week. Uh, got some shipments of fish that need to go out early this next week, but uh, hopefully towards the end of the week, unless I get real busy with work, I'm going to try to set aside some time to trim this guy back a little bit. But uh, this one, um, I uh, kind of lightly call my jungle tank. Um, it is a very, very dense growth. Um, to the uh, left-hand side of the screen in the forefront, you see a uh, Anubius Nana. Uh, the inner growth towards the top is Pennywort, uh, which is way overgrown. And that's going to be cut back considerably. Um, the Anubius is attached to a piece of driftwood back there, and uh, there's some petite nana and uh, some other plants growing off of it, mostly Anubius, though. So. Um, towards the front in the uh, left-hand side is some what I have left of some uh, chain grass, um, which is uh, in the uh, Conodorus family, same as uh, your swords. Um, it's a pygmy chain sword. Um, next to it in the foreground is some more Blixa, and behind it is one huge glob growing off of a piece of driftwood of Java fern. And uh, that's pretty much all that's in that tank. Um, it's a pretty simple tank plants-wise. Um, oh, in the middle of the tank, if you see that little bit of red there, um, that is one, uh, one little lonely uh, AR Mini, which will eventually be, be transferred up to the 40 breeder, which is above this tank on a stand. Um, so that kind of brings us up to date with my tanks. And... Um, you see how they're growing. Um, these are all basically dirted tanks and stuff, but as I said, um, whether you have a, an older dirted tank or whether you're using a uh, non-dirted tank, which I do have some of those and probably should have shot some footage of, but just didn't get around to it, um, there will come a time where you're going to need to add some root tabs. Um, there are uh, quite a few different choices uh, as which way you want to go with that and that's what we're going to be talking about next first off let's take a look at Seachem flourish tabs I have had very good luck with these in the past and would recommend them highly and if you got the money this would be my first choice API or aquarium pharmaceutical 
root tabs. Haven't actually tried them myself, but have talked to some people who have, and they say they do the job just fine. So once again, uh, you can use these, but you will have to uh, put out some money for them. Which finally brings us to DIY root tabs. Uh, there's a plethora of videos out on YouTube on how to put these together, so I'm not going to go into too much depth as into how they are uh, how they're made, but uh, we'll do a cursory on it. Um, first off, you want to buy the gel caps, uh, which you can get off of eBay, um, and you want the double zero gel caps, which uh, come in different quantities or whatever and are relatively cheap. Whether you use uh, Osmocote or miracle Grow, you'll want to take the caplet and scoop up as much as you need to fill the one side of the caplet, then cap it with the other side. So you filled all your caplets. And uh, as you can see, this is a uh, what they look like when they're filled. I have a little contraption I made here out of, a, out of a little syringe. I've split the top off of it, leaving just a little bit of an edge towards the inside of it, which allows me to insert this caplet and hold it, and it will stay in place. Um, it's kind of out of the bow. There you go. See how it holds it in place. Then you can stick it down into the dirt and push the plunger down, and that way the caplet goes down, and uh, you want to do that as low or get it as low to the bottom as possible. So that brings us back to the uh, old 55. Um, as I've said, I have not yet used that method with this tank, but uh, I think that's going to start here coming up soon. Um, I'm going to give it about another six months or so, but I've already seen a few small deficiencies in it. And... Uh, for those of you who don't have the uh, dirt under your uh, substrate and it's just straight substrate or sand, um, I recommend you uh, try the uh, DIY method. It will save you quite a bit of money um, and works just as well. Uh, most of the caplets will last anywhere from oh, two to four months um, before you need to uh, replace them. They are a slow-release fertilizer. Um, as long as you get the caplet down underneath the substrate uh, far enough, uh, the roots from the plants, of course you want to do this near the plants, the roots from the plants should take all the fertilizer up and you should not have a problem with any extra nutrients being released into the aquarium causing an algae problem. But uh, I want to remind you, you do need to get them down as close to the bottom of the tank when you inject them or place them by hand or use tweezers or whatever. You want to get them as low in the substrate as possible so that the nutrients stay locked in the substrate for the roots of the plants. So that's going to be it for today. Um, I hope, uh, hope this was useful to some of you. Um, I hope somebody got something out of it. And uh, we're going to leave it at that. Um, thanks for stopping by.